everybody. Uh, welcome to Destiny Disclosure. This is the very first podcast from Legends of Earth, and we're going to be talking about uh, Destiny-related topics. Uh, today's mostly going to be opinions and, and whatnot, but uh, I'll introduce everybody. Uh, in the red hat is Skill. Hello there. Uh, also runs Destiny Walkthroughs. Hey there. Low Skill here from Legends of Earth. Um... I'd like to consider myself a uh, very competitive player. I definitely like to um, speed through games and get to the end and have the best gear. And I don't necessarily play all parts of the game. I'm not one of the people that really looks at the cinematics or searches every crook and cranny. I'd rather just get the best gun and get to the game and get to the end. And then we also have over here uh, VK from Destiny Dispatch. What's up? Uh, I'm VK, or LOE, Valiant. Valiant from Legends of Earth. Uh, I just really like um, writing. I write for this site right now. Um, and I'm supposed to be working with Destiny Dispatch, like you said. Uh, I really like, like role-playing games. and like I really think video games are like pushing... like narration was as like a medium i think uh they're being taken more seriously like into the mainstream right now like that's why you see all these big names associated with it so pretty excited to be working with the site right on well i figured we'll just go ahead and get into it then uh what was your guys's favorite part of the beta uh i guess we'll start with skill well i would have to say that my favorite part of the beta was definitely the Getting, getting the loot, you know, getting that Ingram halfway through a mission, and you already know that you got something good to go back to town and see if it was going to be something that was an addition to your player. I found myself collecting multiple kinds of the same weapon to see which, uh, which power I liked on it better or which attributes seemed to fit best for which monster, and that, I thoroughly enjoyed, like, leveling up the loot and... Seeing if it was better or played better to my game style. I think that was my favorite part, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, VK? Uh, I would say, like, just, like, the communal type. Like, just kind of playing with your friends, mainly. Just, like, exploring and stuff yeah. like that. I thought that was really Dancing cool. Dancing at the tower. And, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that and just, like, getting destroyed by Sepix, like, when you first started and just getting wrecked. <laughs> When you first, like, <laughs> play the beta. I would say Discovery. Everyone dies, like... You know, the Discovery yeah, part yeah. of the game is pretty fun, too. Yeah. yeah. There, there wasn't much that I didn't like, really. Um, I mean, you guys hit on most of the points that, that I liked. But uh, as far as not liking, though, there was one big thing, and I'm not sure that it was related to Destiny so much as uh, the... the the fucking party system when you when you couldn't you know, get into the party for, or whatever. for Xbox One. Yeah, for Xbox. Yeah. I don't know if it was the same for Play. I'm assuming it wasn't the same for PlayStation. No, no, no. For Xbox One, for for those of you that are in the stream that didn't play on Xbox One, you couldn't be in a party with your friends uh, unless it was still snapped. So you had to play in this you know little bitty screen unless you were you went to the dashboard and like completely exited out of Destiny. And then you had to get into your party, and then you all had to, to relaunch Destiny or whatever. So that was pretty, uh, I guess, frustrating. Yeah, it's, you know, first world problems. It was a beta. Um, uh, to me, I, it, it really irked me, but I found myself still just engrossing myself on what was on the three-quarter screen and finding myself phasing out that party app on the right-hand side. Um, once we figured out... Like, I think two or three days in, they put some sort of patch in so that we could kind of, like, backdoor our way into the party and it would be all right. Um, but, it, honestly, you know, it, uh, once again, I'm just going to go back to, I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully everything's going to be set for release date. But I'm I'm chalking that one up to beta issues, you know what I mean? Um, hopefully that, you know, that's... Yeah. And it was really off and on for me, too. Like, it would, sometimes party chat would work, sometimes... Yeah, and, it, and... So I didn't, like, it, it definitely wasn't a complete it's, hindrance. It's, let's just say uh, the Xbox One's track record with party chat isn't great, so... 
Maybe maybe beta or yeah. the post beta <laughs> Destiny can Guessing, put some uh, pressure on the uh, Xbox Live to get that fixed up. You know what I mean? That's our current gen one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Aspects, I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So what about uh? Finding something that was, I guess, difficult to get used to or whatever. For me, uh, it, it really had such a Halo feel to it that nothing really seemed, like, that far, I guess, out of my league. I really don't know how to say that. But it just seemed so, I guess, Halo-esque that I just naturally had a feel for the game from the start. Um, well, I would say the biggest thing that... People had a hard time getting used to. I would say it was uh, Crucible. We had one game type available, which was uh, Control, right? And it had a domination format where three flags, you want to control the three flags, right? But what people didn't understand was there wasn't a time ticker to that control time. It was actually just a multiplier for your kills. So it was like Team Slayer with multipliers. And however many flags you control, that's the multiplier you get for each kill you get. So I, I saw that, you know, maybe 80% of the community wasn't playing that game correctly. And that I think that was one of the things that people are going to have a... Uh, they jump right into it, but I don't think they picked it up very quickly. I, I'm even saying this on, like, the last day of the beta. People were still playing that one game type wrong. And I, I think that would be the one thing that people had the hardest time to pick up or get used to that I saw in the beta, personally. I guess. Go ahead, BK. Sorry, you were just cutting out a little bit, my bad. Um, for me, I mean, it was mainly just little things. Like, yeah, I, I, I agree with, like, Haley kind of had a Halo-esque feel, like, MMO feel. Like... Mine was just, like, the Grimoire I didn't really understand. And then, like, some of the Iron Banner unlocks and stuff like that. I didn't really, like... Those are, like, the last days where I wasn't really on as much. So those are certain, like, tangible aspects, like, I couldn't really... I didn't really know about or that I didn't really understand. And then the story, which I'm currently researching uh, to write about, but it was kind of vague. I think, well, I think the reason that the story was probably so vague is one, I mean, it was still the beta, so they weren't going to divulge too yeah, much of the right. story. So, I mean, but, right. uh, but yeah, the, the Grimoire was kind of neat. Uh, you know, it gives you little, I guess, hints and tips into the story and whatnot. Yeah, I noticed, um, I collected okay. quite a bit of Grimoire, um, and I figured, I, I checked the site and stuff, they don't have everything with a description yet. So even if you necessarily earn that card in the beta, they still weren't going to give you the info. But what uh, one of the things that was cool about the Grimmer for me was it gives you something to do outside of the game. When you're on your phone, when you're, you know, sitting at the mall waiting for your girlfriend shopping, you, you know, you got something to do on the app, the companion app that Destiny offers. And... I believe once the final game drops, it's going to give each and every person a little bit of insight into something that they definitely didn't know. Like, there's so many cards and so many little tidbits of information that you can get that it's amazing. Yeah, I noticed that they kept the uh, the the beta stats are still on the Destiny app, so... I don't know, are they going to keep those up until the the game actually releases? Or? To me, it sounds like there's just going to be a wipe and reset, you know, once the game drops. Uh, there's been multiple, multiple times that through the through Bungie's mail sack, that I believe that you're really and truly just going to be getting the emblem um, and for, for participating in the beta. I don't think you're going to be able to keep anything else. I, I, and I, I honestly, that's with me um, being able to start over at level one with what I know now it's gonna be like a speed grind almost you know yeah definitely definitely but uh speaking of that oh uh, what is each of your guys's favorite class um, for me personally I it, this is this is a problem because I liked the hunter and I liked the Titan and it's like if I could have a hybrid of those two, I'd be like the fucking Chuck Norris of Destiny, 
because I like the Titans <laughs> Fist of Havoc. I didn't like the Hunter's Golden Gun. Uh, you know, we didn't get to experience the other uh, you know, subclasses or whatever. Like, uh, I forget what, what the other Gunslinger ones are. And... But, um, right. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, I have to lean towards the Hunter, just the way that it plays and uh, the double jump and everything. It really suits me really well. Well, I w- I played all three classes. I got um, two to level eight and one to level seven. I started out with a hunter because I had this preconceived notion that the hunter's super was going to be better than everybody else's because instead of having like um, a one-time shot to get your targets with like Fist of Havoc, you have to get all of your targets within that radius that the fists go down or you have to hit all your targets with the radius of your Nova Bomb. I, I found that with the hunter, that super was really useful that if I missed one shot I didn't completely waste the super you know what I mean I had three options yeah. and the timer does make you move around and doesn't let you sit there and camp a corner just aimed in waiting for people to come around but it also forces you to get close which makes the, the golden gun very useful but in the end I did find myself playing the warlock uh, as my main and reason was was I did find that it used a little bit I, I missed multiple supers just completely threw them off the map or completely missed my target but I found that reward for when you finally caught five people in one Nova bomb felt so amazing to me like that's it once that happened I was sold I was a warlock from then on so how about you VK what was your favorite I'd have to say, like, I think I'd have to play a bit more with each of them to finally decide, but I would say the Titan, just because, I'll be honest, I'm just one of those people that I I want to just stomp on people, <laughs> like, as soon as I get my Super or Crucible. Right. Like, I, I love when people think that I'm, I, I just get super weak, and then bam, I just, like, destroy them. Like, I just, I turn on people in Crucible. <laughs> so I'll have to say the, the Titan, but I, I do think that, um... I'll have to use, like, the other, which you guys are saying, like, was the double jump or the triple jump or whatever for the Connor, or? Well, each of them had different. The double jump. Go ahead. Go ahead, Moose. I was going to say, uh, the double jump was for the Hunter. They each had, you know, what he's going to say, they each have their own, I guess, type of jump. I think uh, uh, he could probably right. talk more about the, the Warlock. I didn't play the Warlock. But as far as the Hunter goes, okay. he had an actual double jump. And I personally liked it because I used it uh, in PVE to be able to get away from the enemy, you know, when they're all surrounding me so I could reload real quick. Um, it helped me out there. Um, but, yeah, Skill would have to ask for the Warlock. I didn't well, like the Warlock at all. With the Warlock, I, I've had, I had some amazing moments in uh, PVP. And the Warlock kind of, it was a glide. And what that meant was it was a slow incline after your initial jump. But... With another, with a triple A tap, you can cancel that jump out. So if you wanted to make it in a doorway without completely gliding your head into the wall, you just cancel out of it and you'll drop down into that doorway, right? What I found worked very well um, in the PvP with the Warlock double jump was that, um, for instance, if there was a person in a doorway and they knew that I was on the other side of the doorway, I could double jump, right? and my movement meter would set go off on their screen, they would think I'm on the ground. They don't know that I'm floating in the air for three or four seconds. They come through the doorway, I'm coming down with my shoddy, it's all over. And I actually found me using that uh, method a lot on uh, the B map, or on uh, the B control point. Um, and I, it would be like, you know, everybody's coming in for B right at the beginning of the game, I'd be hovering over a door waiting for somebody to come in. And I, I found myself using that one a lot. The the Titan kind of had more of what I felt was like a jetpack. It was kind of like once your jet started to go, you accelerated mm-hmm. upwards into the air, right? Um, the Hunter, to me, was more of like your generic double jump. But it had so much speed to it, and you could just double jump and kind of go to where you wanted to go very quickly. So it's really your game style. I find my I found myself with the warlock double jumping very high into the air, 
and then zooming in and falling down from that height. Every time you zoomed in, it would kind of cancel out your jump anyway, so I would try to get up to the top of that jump and then zoom in. And I, I found myself having some good success in player versus player. Well, uh, as far as supers go, um, I personally think that the hunter, uh, Mr. Pink Gun mentioned it, that the hunter has a, a more is more of a skilled class. And as far as supers go, I'd probably have to agree, because it's, well, at least with the golden gun, is you only get three shots and you have to make them count. And uh, I noticed I found myself uh, every time I used the golden gun, I almost felt like an autistic bird because it's just like I couldn't. <laughs> I could never hit anybody, right. you know, it was like I didn't, it, it was so hard. Well, it, see, it, it's, uh, so you couldn't just spam. It, they, I believe they classed it as a high-risk, high-reward super. I believe if I read it right, as you level up and uh, get your uh, skills leveled up, you'll actually get, uh, like, FMJ or um, penetra penetration on your bullets. So that if you had two guys stacked up, one right behind each other, that one golden gun bullet's going to take them both out as well. So eventually you might be able to have that um, four to five piece super kill with your hunter. But more than likely, you know, if it, it seems like if you're just wanting to go in and get multi-kills the second you get your super, the titan's really the way to go. It... it so easy to use and people group up so much in that format of game and control that it seems like if you just want to pop the game in go and play the second it comes out Titan you're gonna be rocking people it's gonna be awesome yeah I had more luck with the Titans fist of havoc than I did with the golden honestly gun. I had more luck with the Titan as well just right out of the box but then again I started the game with the Hunter, which was probably the most difficult. I worked my way into the Warlock, maxed him out, and felt like I had done everything that I really could do. And then I went into the Titan last, so I really had the most uh, grasp on the game with the Titan to start with. What did you think, VK? What was your favorite super, my man? Uh... I would have to say the Titan. I think that's why I ended up favoring it the most. Um, mostly because, like, I mean, I guess, like, the elevation, like, uh, the verticality of the game, um, I didn't really, like, get, like, full grasp of it. So, like, a lot of times when I would jump into the air twice with the Warlock, I'd end up killing myself, basically, with my Nova Bomb. So, <laughs> I didn't really have much luck with the Nova Bomb at all. Right, see, yeah, it's it's... Which is probably what they meant to it's do. It's a time yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a timing thing. And the beauty the right. beauty of it was, uh, for me, was sometimes it was just not the right time to call it in. Even if I had enemies in front of me, I would take a death and hold that super and wait for the appropriate time to use it. Um, the, the, the problem, yeah. you know, waiting for a vehicle to come in... Oh man, I loved hitting vehicles with my super just because it felt to me like the <laughs> perfect answer for those pesky vehicles in PvP. Speaking of uh, vehicles, what uh, we already know that they nerfed the was it the interceptor? Um, were there any other nerfs or buffs that you guys would think uh, should be done? What do you think, VK? See ya. <clears throat> that's what I would try to go for is like as far as like a level crucible I I, I kind of like part of me wants to have the bonuses count part of me doesn't so maybe if you do like a bare bones system um, for like a bare bones like playlist you know what I mean like so that because I was kind of getting melted by like some of the weapons and I you guys know I had a hard time getting certain um, weapons like the Sidonia and stuff like that that did extras when you would zoom in. I feel like some of those may be a bit unfair. Like, what do you guys I've, think? I've thought about it for a long time, and uh, I was one of those players that ended up getting the Sidonia AR3 right in the beginning, and uh, I didn't even have, like, the level 8 version. I believe I had the level 6 version, which was, like, a 52 damage cap or something like that, and I was still just destroying people left and right. 
right off the bat, and it felt to me like in the game, if you are the players that get one of those guns that has that very basic handling skills with high reward, with zooming in, I don't know anybody that really hip fires all the time. So that meant, you know, I zoom in probably 90% of my game. Or like, you know, when I'm shooting the gun, I'm zoomed in probably 90% of the time. So I was getting a bonus 90% of the time, you know, and that it does seem to be a little bit um, unfair. It Only because I'm playing with my buddies and we ran 15, 16 missions trying to get the same gun that I had just so that we all could excel in the same ways. You know what I mean? But then again, there you go. There's replay value in the game. Let's go find that freaking gun that you need. You know what I mean? Let's go get it and we'll run 20 dungeons to get it if we have to. 20 strike missions, you know. Um, with the nerfing, I know the the interceptor. They they put a rate of fire nerf on it. They put a blast radius uh, nerf on it. Um, I believe they instructed us to take advantage um, on that moon map. Uh, there was two pikes that spawned uh, at where you spawn, you know, with the interceptor, but. Um, there was actually a third pike in the middle of the map that you were supposed to go battle for kind of right after, at the beginning. And whoever got that pike should have been able to overpower the interceptor. But that really didn't catch on in the PvP. Um, I, I never successfully did that right off the bat and over, overpowered the interceptor. Um, but they definitely were going to get that nerf down. And I think... Um, there's certain things they're going to have to nerf as well, like, uh, or maybe buff. Um, I saw the, I really like uh, the hand cannon aspect of the game as your main weapon, but uh, there was yeah. no way I was going to be able to keep up with my buddies using assault rifles and PvE, or, or even PvP, <laughs> uh, with my six the, rounds, the hand... you know. Go ahead, Moose. Yeah, the, the hand cannon was... It definitely needs some adjustment. I think either the damage needs to be buffed or the reload needs to be buffed because I found that using it uh, solely just in PvE, I never even bothered to use it in PvP because I knew it was just going to be a disaster. But in PvE, I noticed that I spent more time reloading than I was killing any enemies. And yeah, I agree. I just it, it just it just seemed like a, a big problem. Like either the reload was too small or the damage was too weak to compensate for only having six. Well, rounds. I, so I think that one of those two needs to be. Buffed. I've considered it myself, and you know, we're flying spaceships around. We're going to other planets in the universe. We're fighting monsters and we're legends. You know, I think we could put a fifteen-round clip in our revolver. And I think that could solve a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. You had the high damage, you had the low rate of fire, so let's put a large clip in there. It would be more like um, an auto or a semi-automatic rifle. You know what I mean? Um, to me, yeah. I actually got a level 8 hand cannon, leveled it up, it had 62 damage, and um, I still found myself changing my weapons mid-Crucible game because I just couldn't deal with how hard it was to use. Um, I tried shooting people from halfway across the map. I'm sitting there reloading, and boom, I'm, you know, getting supered on or something, you know. I, I think the hand cannons drastically need something to change. Um, whether it be, what if you could, well, like, if, you know, what if you could reload them super fast? You know what I mean? Like, it... Right. It had, like, super right. slide of hand, boom, 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 you can keep shooting. Or or you had a big clip, they do massive damage. Something's got to change, I agree. I don't think I saw anybody as a level 8 in the beta running around with a hand cannon as their main. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> what do you think on that? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, s speaking <laughs> of that, like, I think one of the things that they really need to implement are loadouts, like have like a 
load out one, two, three, four. They didn't have that. I feel like that's something kind of simple. They most likely will add that, um, so I'm sure it's, yeah, it's just a well, beta. It depends. It, well, it depends on what you think a loadout is, because you're going to be able to carry your gear into PvP, right? But your loadout essentially is your I, I mean, skill it's, tree. It's like, um, yeah. and see, there's going to be multiple skill trees that you can pursue, right? Or multiple subclasses. But even if you, you can lock in to a subclass, right? And you permanently create that character as that subclass. And then they give you an alternate of that subclass. So if, if you're a Void Walker and you lock into Void, and uh, you're going to be able to do two different skill trees off of Void Walker with a bonus to that skill tree. Yeah. But if you don't decide to do that and you want to be able to do everything in the game, you know, or differently, you're going to be able to build skill trees in each of those subclasses. So it it depends on what you consider a loadout. And I don't know if you'll be able to change your subclass mid-game. That'll be something we'll see if it gets unlocked after the beta. I just meant for weapons. We'll see. Right. In the beta... Um, for the for the loadout, really, when you get your map selection, you're gonna be able to change your gear in the beginning, and you should be able to get your the heavy weapon that you want, um, and then special weapon that you want. Um, I found myself leveling up all my guns in PVE, and then going in the Crucible to use them. I didn't want to, you know, I could kill a hundred monsters in one mission. But it was rare that I could kill a hundred people in one crucible match. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking about it. But would you say so, you guys liked PVE or PVP better? Ooh. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'd say PVE I don't know. for me. Um, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, that's hard, because I've always been a huge PvP, you know, guy. You know, I played professionally for Halo 2, and a little bit in, in Call of Duty, but uh, the PvP, I think, is more challenging than the average game. Like, in most games, you can just go through and, you know, almost do it blind, but, you know, there's... They added so much difficulty and AI to Destiny that I think PvP it, or uh, PVE is actually going to be uh, really super entertaining. But uh, well, I can't wait to raid. I wouldn't count out PvP either. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm gonna well, have a this is there's <laughs> so much depth the PvP that I don't think uh, the average bear knows about yet because it's a brand new game. You know what I mean? The the foundation's brand new. Um, for instance, you know, what stats you want on your gear, you know, I found myself putting intellect on all my warlocks gear, and then about halfway through the beta, I discovered that if you put your little marker on intellect, it showed you the bonus you get from that stat, and I had it well over max, so I found that I could put strength on an item and get uh, a melee bonus of damage, and have my full grenade uh, reload response or whatever effect from the uh, from the gear I already had. And that's something I think people are going to have to find out is the balance of what stats they need on their gear for PvP and uh, especially their skills. That's going to be huge. Uh, if somebody was had their skills leveled up more than you in PvP, essentially that meant they might have had... 50% more armor, or 50% more speed, or, you know, or recovery, it, it, that's one thing that people didn't understand was those passive skills from your attributes, oh man, they do so much, and that's something you can't really see, that's just something you experience, you felt like you were shooting somebody a hundred times, and they turn around and shoot you three times, well, it's probably because their attribute skills was leveled up quite more than yours, you know what I mean? And that's just something you can't tell right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, well, since we're, we're talking about uh, PvP, I figure uh, we might as well talk about uh, how PvP works. Um, well... Uh, do you want to start that off, Stu? <laughs> you, you, 
you talk to Flame Sword about well, that? Well, we, we, there's kind of like <laughs> two methods or ideas of how it's working right now. I, I've, I've kind of spent the time since the beta looking for some confirmation, especially straight from Bungie's lips. You know, that's the only person you can truly tr believe on these kind of information. It's basically everybody's taking their experience and trying to put mythology to it, a method to their experience. But what what I saw, and Flame Sword has a video about uh, the player versus player aspect of Destiny, and it was a video referring to he he thinks, and I kind of agree with him, that everybody comes in with a base health stat and a base damage stat on on them. Your armor and your health, or your your health stat, is a base, right? The only things that change it are your skill tree and the white uh, skill bonus at the bottom of your gun, which, like on the Sardonia, happened to be that you got a damage bonus, right? When zoomed in, so that actually applies in the PvP, but it doesn't mean that you know. It, I believe that that was Bungie's attempt on putting everybody on a leve level playing field. That, you know, my white weapon could come in and kill you even though that you had a weapon that did 20% more damage than mine. You know what I mean? But the other, the other hand, or the other method, was that all the gear that you have, that's what goes into the game, and that's why you were getting destroyed. But I didn't think that that's the way it was set up, only because of those aspects of if everybody, or if half the community has this OP weapon and the other half doesn't, you know what I mean? It's just always going to win. But we kind of saw that everybody that was taking PvP serious was using that Sardonia AR3 because of that damage bonus, because of how it actually, how much of an effect it actually had in the in the Crucible. Well, see, the way I understand it is I talked to Josh Hamrick about it a little bit. And from what I gathered from him is that you have 100 health and then 100 that, shield. So it's like 200 This health. is Josh Hamrick from Bungie, then, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some random um, guy named Josh Hamrick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's from Bungie. Um, so basically, uh, from what he says is, you know, you have your, your, your health and it changes, you know, as, you know, you're, you get better gear and whatnot. So... Uh, it changes, and then you have to look. At, let me uh, look at it here. You have to uh, look at your attack plus your impact, and then you also have to look at rate of fire to determine what your weapons and and the damage is going to be. So if you have, you know, like if you have a high rate of fire, and say you have uh, a 60 attack. And your impact, uh, we don't have numbers on it yet until it comes out on PC, but, uh, you know, say it's above halfway, then you're looking at roughly, you know, less than four shots to kill without shields. Or with shields, you're probably looking at like five or six. That's that's my assumption on, on what he meant by that. Um, it's, see, there's, with all these stats combined, it's kind of hard to tell what is implementing what is not really working as much um i found that with the high rate of fire weapons you have low impact right so to get people's shields down and their which was i believe your shields was your armor stat right to get their shields down it took more bullets but once that shields their shields were down that rate of fire meant you you killed them faster if all your if all your bullets hit right um, but the guns with lower rate of fire, but higher impact, it would take less bullets for them to get your shields down, but it takes a longer amount of time because of that rate of fire for them to kill you with your health. So it's kind of a toss-up on what your game style is. If you're running and gunning and you're going to be getting in quick, those high rate of fire weapons are going to pay off big. Um, but if you're more of the people that are zooming in from across the map, you know, the ARs, that's where it's at. And you can kind of see that stack go in on the sniper rifles with how high impact and how high damage. You see it work together. The shields get down on your first shot, the health is gone on the second. So it's, uh, I think, 
it's really you're gonna have to find the stat that is to your game style and stack it as high as you can get. You know, if you're gonna be running and gunning, you need to get your speed, your agility stat up, and you need to find guns with high rate of fire. But that's my opinion, guys. <laughs> Yeah, well, once Destiny comes out on P uh, on PC, I almost said on PvP, but once Destiny comes out on PC, um, we'll be able to actually break down all these stats and well, figure see, it out. That's um, one of the things that for Titanfall. Go ahead, Miss. Yeah, because for Titanfall and COD, we uh, you know, I would go to uh, the Denkerson forums, and he he'd have all the stats and, and the code broke down, so you could see you know how you know, each weapon stat and everything like that. I'm not sure, you know, if Destiny's, you know, how well that's going to work on Destiny. Well, but I'm guess assuming what? Since, uh, it's, I don't what? think Destiny's coming out on PC, buddy. I'm pretty sure that it is. Uh, March uh, 2015 is uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. when it's coming out. PC Master Race, yeah. dude. Uh yeah, so them. it won't be till you know, won't, yeah, it won't be till next year. Oh, okay, but, okay. Uh, well, it's going to be up to us to next, next year. try to get the stats as close yeah. as possible to what they actually are. Yeah, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but I'm sure we can get it done. <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll go with the last question. Do you think Bungie will make their budget back? Um. Well, allegedly it's five hundred million, right? And that's a record. Yeah. You know, it's that's a chunk of change. And honestly. The hype is there. You know, we, for the first time, I believe, we truly have a unified gaming community between the PlayStation and the Xbox, a game that we can both talk about and say that we enjoy. And we don't have to, you know, I know that there's a big divide between Xbox and PlayStation players where, you know, your favorite game that you played, they didn't play at all because they didn't offer it. So you couldn't, you didn't have that topic or that way to relate to one another but with destiny it seems like with this community coming together and more and more and more people you know it it absolutely i think they're going to be making that 500 million back easily and then coming back and making a 500 million more honestly <laughs> uh, what, what do you think vk i got i got some some stats on it but i want to get your opinion first i think so but I think right now, I think what's important really is getting the fan base and keeping them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Titanfall, you saw how long that lasted with their, I mean, like, I mean, there's no longevity associated with that game. Like, would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, kind of. I, I mean, just a quick rant is I do think Titanfall is better than Call of Duty, but a lot of 12-year-olds don't. But go ahead and continue. I mean, fair enough. We'll just... We'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to get started on Titanfall. Well, I think, I'm, we don't have enough time yeah, left for this. Yeah. We won't talk about ghosts. Oh, please. Oh, yeah. don't even get me started on ghosts. <laughs> yeah. My blood pressure is... Yeah, <laughs> let's let's keep it where it's at. Um, but I think as long as they ex, like, embrace the, more of the MMO aspects, like, I want to see so much, like, map. Like, that's what I really... Like, you said, like, Discovery is really, like... Like seeing like different landscapes, like going to towns and stuff like that. Like I would kill for well, that. Like just on a, like a console for me to be able to do that. So I think it will make the budget back if like it can just keep their their fan base really. Well, I think. Uh, well, does that like make sense? Go ahead, Moose. Yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna say that um, on. The GamingFall.com forums that uh, I'm an active member on, uh, they posted on here, I guess, uh, a, what is it, Cowan's report for, uh, yeah, Cowan 2014 video game Ordometer, which is like, I guess, a, a, a statistic for pre-orders. And they're saying on here that um, they're projected to sell... 10 to 15 million copies, which roughly estimates to 600 to 900 million dollars. So, if that were to be true, they would get a minimum of 600 million, which would be 100 million more than their their budget. And even at that, um, this is based against the uh, Ordometer score relative to the number one selling game across 2011 through 2013, which was Call of Duty Black Ops 2. 
and it's number one. Uh, that was 11 with uh, 11 weeks till launch, and the score was 687.3. So All right. I think well, uh, it's looking at one of the the best games from probably the last 10 years. I know most anybody that's probably going to be watching this stream is probably familiar with Bungie.net, and they came out with an update where they released the stats from the beta. And let me tell you, they're impressive. We have 6.5 million Guardians created. Um, we have 4,600,000 players. We had almost a million players on the Companion app. We had almost 900,000 concurrent players. We had 88 million games played. Right? And this is 182 million orbs of light were collected. <laughs> so this Damn. this is about to be the biggest game that's come out probably <laughs> since Halo. But even Halo wasn't on multi console, so it's who knows, man. Yeah. Well, if you're looking, well, I think we at... can agree with. Like... Yeah, let, let's just round that down to 4 million. And then if you times that by 60, uh, you're looking at uh, 4 times 60 is 240. Add a bunch of zeros. That's like 240 million. Something yeah, like but that. they don't necessarily make all that money. They don't make all the $60. There's the, there's the shipping cost, packaging yeah. cost. All You know what I mean? All of that is implemented. Yeah. So. Okay. So, They're only getting certain a certain room. portion, but I definitely think, and we already got two L two DLCs on the way. And if you're a fan of the game, right. you know, you're yeah. definitely going to be strapping up for the, They're, the DLCs. They're ready for the launch, I think. Oh, and I'm ready. I'm right yeah. there with I them. Mean, I'm right there with them. I'm, I'm ready yeah. to, I've literally, I've played Diablo 3, World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Halo, and I'm ready to drop them all for Destiny. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know, because after the beta, like, I'm just sitting here literally just, like, crying in a corner going through, like, heroin withdrawals because there's nothing to do. Uh, I tried playing Call of Duty the other day, and I was, like, sticking my dick in a meat grinder. Oof. It was just kind of awful. Yeah, Call of Duty these days is pretty tough. Uh, I know once you've gone to a scuff, you don't go back, and that's kind of my problem right. with, with Call <laughs> yeah. of Duty is now it seems like there's a community of players that have scuffs and a community of players that don't, and it's kind of hard to keep up without it. I don't really... Yeah, I don't really see the scuff being too much of, like, a, a game-breaker in Destiny like it is in Call of Duty, but, I mean, I don't, know, I don't have a scuff I, for the I one think, one for the 360. I think so. uh, knowing your gear, knowing your character, your skill tree... That's really going to be the game breaker in Destiny. Knowing what strengthens the way you play and what weakens it and knowing how to balance that all out, I think that's how you're going to really know who the good players are from the bad. Yeah. But, but uh, well, uh, I think that's probably good for the night, good 45-minute podcast. Uh, thanks for everyone for coming out, and uh, I really want to thank my sponsor, or our sponsor, rather, uh, First Step Pro Wellness. Uh, they got these really cool uh, B12 uh, shots, like five-hour energies. So you can get them at CVS and Walgreens. Uh, they're really cool. They're like, you get two of them for the price of a five-hour energy, and they're the exact same fucking thing. So, nice. Thanks to them, and thank you guys for coming out. Oh, and thanks for having us. Uh, shout out to people. Shout out to who, VK? <laughs> people in the chat. Oh, yeah. Thanks, chat. Uh, <laughs> we definitely appreciate it. We're going to try to get this on a, I believe, weekly basis, maybe bi-weekly. But once Destiny comes out, we're going to have so much more to talk about. So I can't wait. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll probably do it every Sunday. Because uh, I know uh, uh, Rex mentioned that uh, Guardians of uh, Destiny do their uh, uh, Guardian radio every Monday. So I figured they do theirs Monday, and then Prime Guard does theirs on uh, Tuesdays. So I figured Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday would be a decent way to kick off the week. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you coming and watching us live. We're going to probably process the video and put it up on YouTube to be watched later. So if you want to drop a comment in, maybe say what your favorite part of the stream was, we'd greatly appreciate it. 
Yep, appreciate all feedback, yeah. and uh, we will uh, talk to you guys next week, I guess.